This is the Poco M45G disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at the SIM tray. Next, we need to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen, and then run it along the edges to pop off the catches. Once you have the back housing loose from the frame, keep in mind there's some adhesive around the camera, so the top portion of the back housing you'll have to lift up to pry off from the frame. There are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now the top plastic cover can be lifted up and removed. And then the battery cable can be disconnected. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. The back housing is made of plastic. The camera assembly bezel can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. On the other side, there are numerous antenna flex cables around the borders, as well as some graphite film to help transfer heat, and the fingerprint sensor is held to the side with a bracket. The camera lens covers are also held down with some adhesive, so if you needed to replace either of those, you'd have to apply some heat and gently pry them off. The LED flash is located in between them. Taking a look at the other side, there's more graphite film to help transfer heat. There's a white and black coaxial cable which need to be disconnected from the main board by popping them off. There's some graphite film covering the connector for the front facing camera which needs to be peeled off so it can disconnect and remove that. Here's a better look at the 8 megapixel front facing camera. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the main board there's a 50 megapixel primary camera and a 2 megapixel depth lens. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. Also the camera connectors can be disconnected by popping them off. And there's copper tape on the front shields. The headphone jack is located on the top corner of the board. There's an infrared or IR blaster and the proximity sensor is located on the other top corner. The SIM card and memory card reader is also located on the back, and there's more copper tape on the back shields with some thermal paste. Once the copper tape is peeled off, we can see thermal pads on these chips, and some black colored thermal paste on these. Here's a better look with the thermal pads removed. The bottom speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at that. And there's a mesh filter over the speaker opening. This flex cable, as well as the two other ends of the coaxial cable, need to be disconnected from the subboard. And then the subboard can be lifted up and removed. There's a rubber gasket around the charger port, and the primary microphone is located right here. Here's a look at the other side. To remove the battery, there's a pull-tap provider to help us pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery adhesive pouch is peeled back, we can see the flex cable for the screen which is right out through an opening in the midframe. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back housing, and then remove the screws and remove the top and bottom cover. You'd then disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable, pry the battery and battery adhesive pouch off, 
Then you would need to disconnect the cables on the bottom and remove the subboard. At that point, you heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath the screen. You pry your old screen off. Apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable for the screen, as well as this flex cable on the bottom through the openings in the mid frame, and then you'd reassemble the phone. Moving on, the vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner and it's held down with some adhesive. The flex cable for the volume keys and the power button is located on this side. And the earpiece speaker is located on top and that's also held down with some adhesive. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, reapply the back housing. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.